they did ban out the Tide as well, and the Pango. So just direct ban outs towards FBZ on Motivate's end. Really not wanting to give FBZ a good time. And I think that's fair. I mean, we talked about FBZ last game, John. He's, he's probably the most consistent player on the whole team. He's just always good. I mean, there, there's never a time we've seen him where he's just bad. He, he always has yeah. great impact. Uh, the previous roster of Boom did say he was like the spine of the team. If he fails, then everyone fails around him. So... He's just consistently great at what he does. I'm just curious now as to what he picks up in the off lane. In fact, never mind, because we do have a Monkey King. And I don't necessarily think that is going to be an FBZ off lane Monkey King, but you never know. It could be. I believe it was GXR that, that were making that happen, or rather NGX that were making that happen yesterday. Yeah. But to be fair, that didn't really work out for them. But again, you never know. Yeah, it's fairly open. I think... For Boom, a big FBZ hero is that Timbersaw. You see two strength heroes here already for Motivate True. Trust. If the support picks for Motivate Trust don't kind of cancel out the Tim, I think it's a really good Tim game for FBZ. There might be counter synergy with a Monkey King in now. You know, you, you might cut down the tree by mistake. Jumping around, we've seen that a couple of times with Monkey King Mars, where you arena and drop your allied Monkey King tends to cause trouble, but it's still something really good for FBZ to kind of build up on. It's one of his signature heroes. Um, the Monkey King coming out from Boom as well doesn't necessarily mean it's uh, our Mushi Monkey King. That could be Tim's Monkey King on the 4, Clockwork 5 once more for Scam. So you get insane vision with your two supports. And yep. insane rotation capability as well in these two heroes. And that still frees up the snap far mid for Yopaj if you want. So uh, it's still fairly open. Um, they could again run the Mushi Monkey King or even the Yopaj Monkey King mid. Lots of flexibility in switching things around. Motivate Trust though, we'll dig wow. into those uh, one of those aggressive sports. They get the Marana Mars combination with the Ember on hand. So they go back to the Ember. I worry that if it's the Ember versus Snap again, and that it might end up being the same story from laning phase. I think in that case. Fearless might have to consider something like, say, a 1-3-1 one one build. You know, not emphasizing Flame Guard, just playing around the slide of fist, try to dodge out the use of Cookie and Scatter Blast, and equalize the lane from there. Harass out with your right clicks. Yeah. That might be one way to counteract that early magic damage of the snap mid, but it can be tricky. Boom does go into the Enchantress as well, so perhaps uh, keeping the Monkey King for now. Like, Ench Clockwork support duo, Monkey King safe lane, snap far mid, is what it's looking like for Boom right now. Yeah. Very, very interesting draft. Not really too much being revealed, but there is definitely the uh, the chance of a snap by a core as well, John. Uh, definitely not out of the books yet. Mind you, they do choose Enchantress into Marana. You talk about that kind of arrow potential into the neutral creep, and that's not very fun for the Ench to play with, but I think you could happily just take the Ench as a pause 4, keep the Clockwork pause 5, and, and just avoid the Marana during the laning stage, because that's really... The only time you care so much about the enchanted creep. After that, after the laning stage, you don't really mind if it gets sniped. It's not really about the creep anymore. But before that, during the laning stage, naturally you'd rather keep it. Still, final pickups are upon us, John. Motivate Trust do appear to need one more support. A boom Esports does feel like they need another core. Whether it's a mid lane, whether it's an off lane, whether it's a, a, a safe lane. Still very flexible, but it does feel like we are lacking the FBZ hero. And I do really enjoy the idea you had about the Timber Saw here, John. It's been a long time since we've seen FBZ Timber. You talked about having two strength heroes on the enemy team. They are the... Whoa, a Crystal Maiden comes out as well. Mm. Something I wasn't expecting, but... Well, there you go. I still think it's a great Timber game. I still agree with you on that sense. Talk to me about the Crystal Maiden, Jonathan. I think that's just to preempt where the Enchantress goes. Right, so if you right. do go for Enchantress, you have to deal with the CM in lane, who will just Frostbite your creep, and that buff to Frostbite when did come out, we saw that be really impactful against Beastmaster matchups, against Enchantress, because it's so cheap now. So you right. can just get that free creep, deny out the Enchantress advantage, and boom, we'll go to the Luna. So they take okay. the Luna themselves, matchup versus Wraith King is actually pretty good. You can clear out the uh, skeletons coming through. They will run the FBZ Monkey King. So taking a page out from Mizu. Okay. And the Snapfire mid again for Yopaj. So again, the, the matchup for Fearless is the same. He's going to have to adjust his uh, skill buildup, lane buildup there. But the a Monkey King off lane is an interesting one. Again, we've only seen that from Mizu. So we'll have to see how much FBZ brings out with this. Um, there is potency there. There's a lot of vision coming out for the Clockwork and the Monkey King. A lot of early activity as well. But they don't have the best setup now for the Kisses outside of the Cogs. So you don't have Ravage to really set up 
for a long duration kiss, you're going to have to rely more on scam and maybe the boundless and slows in the arena to really get that done. Very interesting draft here. I mean, last time around, I had a lot more faith in Boom Esports' draft. This time, I'm not really sure how to feel about it. Very, very aggressive. Uh, does feel like they are going to be able to buy Mushi the space he requires on the Lunar uh, to just get out of control. See if they can deal with Jackie's, Jackie's Wraith King as well. I mean, it's one of his favorite heroes to play. I'm really not just sure that I feel like Motivate, they've got a much more well-rounded draft here. But after seeing game one and the way that Boom played it, it's really hard to doubt them. So I'm going to ask you the difficult question, Jonathan. Who has the superior draft going into game number two? It's a tough one to call. Um, it, it is looking a bit better for Motivate Trust. They've still got good arena combinations, like Arena Plus Frozen Field is actually really good. Not something you see too often, but if you can get that done, that's a lot of damage from control in that tight spot. I still feel like Boom has a bit of an advantage solely from the mid matchup. Again, if Fearless doesn't adjust, if we don't see those mid lane rotations come in from Mirana, Yopaj is going to hit that same travel, blink timing, be around the map, and they have even more information with a Monkey King around to help out. So I think that's the one thing Motivate Trust has to watch out for, that mid lane timing. If Yopaj overwhelms them, then we're going to see the same repeat from game one. Okay, so are you telling me Boom has a superior draft job? Yeah, I, I'd say it. I, I think the snap fire is going to get work done once more. I don't think anything changes with the Ember. You could try Slide Prepare Fist. It still doesn't get easy for the Ember in that lane. Okay, fair enough. See so if you're right this time around. You've been right quite a few times today, John. To my pleasant <laughs> surprise, let me tell you. We do have immediate tips flying out from both teams. I may as well, John. In fact, never mind. Hold on a minute. They're going to have a conversation now. The boy in Boonville. In fact, they're going to meet up. Jackie, Wraith Fire Blast, going to find Skem. Arrow going to be tanked there by the Ench, but they do have the heal up, and now they might be able to turn back around. But I'd still say the level 1 timing is much better for Motivate, as they will continue trying to chase down Skem. Another Wraith Fire Blast in 3 seconds. If they could just keep up the vision, but Skem, he's going to run towards the north, into the tree line. They just need that little bit of vision to get this kill, Skem. He's going to run into Boom Bill. Still, Skem is buying even more time for himself. Oh he's going to run God. deeper into the tree line, but the arrow, oh. right on target. That's what you love to see. Q, he does the measurements. They'll get the kill, Mass Ross. He'll take it for himself in the Mars. Great pickup on First Blood, but they're set to lose all their bounties. That's a five man up top. They're not going to be able to run up in time to grab any single one. So uh, Boom's going to have a good network advantage for the rest of the team, despite feeding that First Blood and think that kind of balances out that loss. So Boom, still going to be happy with the lanes breaking out. And Motivate just going to have to try to build up with Masaros now. He has a great start for his lane set. He's going to have the stick flying out. He's going to be able to sustain. You can see Tim's. Doing some good harassment onto Fearless. Half his HP, so that's one tango down already. And every single point of regen counts for that mid matchup, because we saw Yopaj again just overwhelm early on. You want to stay in this lane as long as possible if you're Fearless. I really like the way Tim's is playing this. So as I've said that, he might die now, but no, he's got the healer. He should be able to find a way out, I think. Boom Booey. Oh, he's got a mango with a frostbite. That should be it for Tim's. All right, I've cursed him, John. My apologies, Tim's. I, I won't compliment you again, <laughs> sir, as FBZ now. It's going to be run down here by Motivate. Another Frostbite into another arrow, but the Boundless is there to try and buy him more time, but it won't matter. Jackie will chase him down. Very fire, though, going to keep him up. He'll survive. And Motivate, they will eventually allow Q to get out of there. And I was about to compliment Tim's on how well he's playing the Eng. Just really annoying Fearless in the mid lane, going for the heal level 1 to, to tank the arrow earlier on. Fortunately, he did just drop a life, but, you know, still great play here from Tim's. Yeah, the initial laning phase isn't looking too good for Boom, but once a tri lane breaks out, I think you have a lot to play with here. Like, you can just try to harass out with the impetus down the line. You can go for the enchant, use that for the slow instead. And uh, just kind of harass out the CM in that case, because she has no move speed. Not going to be easy for the CM to kind of run away once that's done. And even though Tim's died, he forced out a couple of mango uses. The Boom Boy is going to be down for mana now. It becomes a lot harder for the CM to keep spamming her spells out. Jackie's still having a great time from that uh, initial lane, though. Uh, up there in CS, but he will have to watch himself. It's a melee matchup against Monkey King. You are fairly tanky as the Raid King, but once you hit level 3, level 4 on the Monkey, you can just ride back, trade right clicks, clear out the lane, and keep staying alive. You don't have enough burst damage and motivate trust once Monkey has that uh, Jingu Mastery up. 
We did confirm, by the way, in the lobby that I, I believe this whole different name thing on Motivate is a bug, right? It's they're meant to be the old names. Um, I think Jackie's set to be Jack Boys, but oh, I think Fearless yeah. should be Fearless. So uh, that's a yeah, because right now we see Gotcha Boy with no MTG tag, so I think that's right. a bug. But Jackie did name change, yeah. Right. <laughs> that might be the whole E meme that's been going around about poor old Jackie. Take it as a compliment, Jackie. Don't worry about the, the viewers. They, they like to say nasty things sometimes. It's okay. You'll be fine. It's mid lane, of course. Your Paj against, uh, against Fearless, as we do know him now. Your Paj still having a great time, John. 18 and 4. That's a great cookie setup as well into a Scatter Blast. That's a little mechanic not many people know about. If the creep dies mid-air, it will stop flying forward and it will stun right on the spot that the cookie connected with the creep. Yeah. And I like what Felix is doing in this lane as well to rebalance it, Mike. You know, we're seeing plays coming out from Yosh Paj, but he does have the Slide of Fist leveled up. So he's going for a 1-0-1-2 one, one, build, possibly going to 1-3-1 one, one, to hold that lane and just dodge out these spells from the snap. Yeah, of course, top lane, FBZ did end up dropping. We didn't quite catch that on camera, but believe me, he did. Because you, it's still a pretty devastating combo just with the CM and the Wraith King. Just so much damage to be kind of belted out. As bot lane, Mushi getting quite low himself now on the Lunar. Almost secures Q on a Mirana, but he always had the leap charges, so he would have been just fine. But unlike last game, it does feel like Boom is having a slightly more difficult time with the laning stage, at least for now. Yeah, the side lanes aren't having a good time. Mushi is still finding CS. You know, all things considered, even with all the harassment out, Mushi's still finding farm, so you can be happy about that. They do manage to eventually kill off Boom Boy. And once you're enchanted up, uh, CM can't run. She doesn't even have boots. Like, they, they went back for the Ring of Basilius on that no Crystal Maiden, so... No yeah, idea what you're just... talking about, John. I think Crystal Maiden deserves a nerf again on that movement speed. It's <laughs> way too fast. Stop it. You Stop do it, John. The 280. 280 and then you get enchanted off. You're just dead. Well, Scan's going to drop now at the bot lane, John. Enough playing around. We've missed two kills now. It's Q and Maceros going to be very low HP. If they do manage to secure the kill... Problem is, you start to ask whether they can remain in the laning stage now, as they're just so damn low. They're gonna try and get aggressive, it seems. Lose some beam out. Masteros with the shield crashes there. Q gonna jump in with an arrow now. And yeah, maybe they do have enough. Or maybe Ooh. not. Mushi is still fine, but Q, he does cancel off the sound, but now the turnaround. Scam is rejoined. Fairy fire up. It's not gonna be enough. Mushi barely surviving throughout all this amount of damage. Scam barely saving his life with the salve, but. Now Mushi's kind of reversed positions with Maceros. And he's the one on very low HP, but he is being fed tangos by Skem. Yeah, Skem being a good support, ensuring that his safe laner stays. I like this early raindrop from Maceros. It is preventing Mushi from looking for the kill opportunities with that Lucent Beam while he's low HP. So it's stalling out for time, but it's still a rough lane out for the Mars with all the kills coming out for the Luna. Chase is on with that level two champ, but Tim's he's just gonna get crit down here by Jackie. That level 2 enchant, that's a big power spike for the enchantress. Problem is though, if you get caught like that with a frostbite into a stun, they are going to be able to return a lot more damage towards your way. FBZ will try to maintain himself in this laning stage while Tims is gone. I think Motivate, at the very least in the safe lane, are doing a great job of dealing with the Tims enchantress. They've, they're just making it hard for Tims to play with the creeps. And they've always got the frostbite. Boombell can just walk in, frostbite, get free creep. And just prevent that. I think for Tim's, he's going to have to balance it around with using it on creeps and using it on heroes. Your best shot is still just getting a slow off on that CM or even a Raid King and just constantly hitting away with FBZ. And that's probably your best bet in getting some aggression out here. Is that Frostbite again? So much damage on this poor Wildwing Ripper, but they are going to make the jump in and try to punish Moonbuoy. He's running real fast here, John, but he is going to get taken down. <laughs> FBZ and Tim's able to get the job done. Ah, the life of a CM against Enchantress. It's not a good time, Tims. He's died a couple of times, but they are slowing down that CM's presence. Because of this constant enchant, CM just can't dip into the small camp and clear out creeps, get EXP. So you're slowing down in that early scaling the CM can provide globally. There is some aggression coming out from Motivate Trust. They are much more willing to cut off Yopaj and trying to grab some runes, which is a good changeup from game one. So you're giving... Fearless a bit more of a game. He is still lagging behind in CS, but he hasn't died, which is a massive improvement. Last time we saw Yopaj hit six, he immediately got that kill and started running from there. Oh, FBZ in trouble again. Three man up the top lane. FBZ still trying to fight back against Jackie. Oh, and back with the Jingu. That's a lot of damage. And the heals out from Tim's. 
They are going to turn it right back around. In fact, now Boom Bui, he's not going to be able to get out of this. Yopaj does rotate with the Scatter Blast and does secure a kill for himself now. Not great news for Motivate Trust as even bot lane. Masaros, he's being dived into the T1 tower. Mushi not going to go all the way for this. As the raindrops do save the life of the Mars. But Masaros, he's going to have to make the walk of shame back to the fountain. And it's just buying more space out for Boom. So after a s slower start to the lanes, Boom have managed to found her grip here. Um, kind of building off the back of Fuel Pod, just getting these rotations out now. And the pressure is applying onto Jackie. He doesn't have level 6, half a level away, so if Tims does, if uh, Yopaj commits, then Raid King's dead. This could be very dangerous. Q is still around, but they have got Yopaj now. With those Mortimus kisses up, Q is going to try and fight against Tims. Meanwhile, though, you know they want the Raid King. That's the big target. He's not level 6 yet either, and here they come. The Mortimus kisses. That'll be enough, Jackie. He cannot survive it. They'll just go after the T1 with the 6 minute siege, or rather 5 minute siege creep. They've got the tomato as well there from Tim's, and it's going to be a very early T1 tower taken by Boom. And John, with the draft like this, if you get these, obje these objectives early, you can just take over the map so darn quick, and there's just not much Motivate will be able to do to fight back. Yeah, they have some decent counter push on Motivate Trust. They've got the Skeletons to eventually take a lane, but you've been really slowed down on Jackie. You need to give this Raid King a jungle spot to farm in. They haven't had the time to build up stacks. And there's already a forward ward from Boom to watch top jungle, to watch the triangle. They've got the information out to know when Jackie's going to dip in and build up, and they can always kind of just make their rotations from there. This game is being kind of stalked right now here by Fearless, but the Sentry does give vision. Fox pushed back twice. Fearless is going to have to run back, and Scam, he's having a very good day apparently. Very excited here. He does get himself out. Still full HP, full mana, or basically full mana. They just keep roaming across the map. No real stress here for the clockwork. Yeah, they've managed to just send Mushi into jungle now. Not many stacks built up, but they are just playing it safe. There is a jungle, uh, ancient stack piece built up for Luna. And the side of Motivate Trust might look for that push down bot. They are starting to clump up. The triangle ward still giving them info, and the smoke immediately broken by Scam. Oh, Scam's doing a great job. I mean, he's just doing a fantastic job as the tips go over to Boom Bui. He doesn't even die for that. That's the worst part for Motivators. He, if he's going to break the smoke, you at least want to kill him. But they can't even find the clockwork. And that means Mushi, he just remains in this Radiant Jungle for as long as possible. Jackie? And in the meantime, Jackie, he's going to be okay. Radiant's the cookie was not on target. FBZ kind of just losing the angle there for a second. So Jackie's going to be okay this time around. In the meantime, Motivate. They'll try to chase down Skem again, but this is just so much waste of time. Maybe they get him though. Arrow is going to land. Spear is there. Keep in mind though, this is four heroes for a pause five clockwork. And as you can tell by Skem's voice line, he is not too concerned about his own death. Just massive amounts of space. The push is still not coming out from side of we Trust, and that's enough time for some TPs to come in. Mushi still holding that lane. Tim shows up as well. Does not have the... Uh, Untouchable, but does have level 3 heal along with level 3 enchant. So there's some presence here for that enchantress. And if Motivate Trust is not careful, there could be a trade here for Boom. Yeah, Fearless is going to find Tim's, but that's not exactly the target you'd like to start on. He's a bit tanky. The cookie lands. Fearless just gets blown up as now the hook shot's there. Scam. Oh, he's got Maceros. Revenge tastes so sweet for Boom Esports. And Motivate yet to find their footing this game one. I mean, yeah, they've got six kills, but they're 3k net worth behind. And it's not looking great for them at all. Yeah, they're, they're just finding Scam once more every time. This is reminiscent of game one, Mike, where the relocates are finding that clockwork. Not the big core kills, they're committing a lot of resources for that. They haven't found a push opportunity yet for motivating. And that's setting them back from opening the map up for Jackie as well. Look at this four hero rotation again. I mean, I know we used to see Motivate do this. They stick as four and just play the four protect one, but not this early. They'll try. They'll smoke up again as four, try to get something done. See if they read the movement this time on Boom Esports. A skim. He is around. Moonlight Shadow this time will keep them out of vision. As they'll run through the mid lane right towards that Radiant Triangle where they will find Mushi very soon. But can they make it to the high ground? Dyer. They're going to try. They've got a few more seconds left off this invis, but Mushi, he's playing very carefully, makes the right movement at the right time. He'll go towards the top T1. He knows that they are around. And Motivate, they will get nothing. 
confirm they read them like a book. And that was some good micro coming out from our inch. It, the creep got blocked for a moment, and I, and I think Tim saw that because he was microing it back the other way after it. So they spot out the smoke with the creep, and that's enough time for Mushi to just get the stack, pull back, stay safe. They can go for the defense in the top tier one if they want to now. Rotations are in, Skem. He has a hook shot. He sees a crystal maiden. He wants the kill. He'll even get Q, but he'll leave out of there. And I'll tell you what, John, as a clockwork spammer myself, there's nothing you enjoy more than hookshotting Crystal Maiden, as there is nothing she can do to get out, and Q will drop to boot. So Skem, he'll set up another two kills. It's just classic Skem Baloo things, you know? Pause 5, pause 1, pause 3, it doesn't matter, he'll play anything. Yep, he's basically pause ending. We've seen that in his time in Neon, and his time now in Boom, just shifting around when he feels the team needs a different direction, and it works out. Motivate Trust. Oh, Masterox. He saw the Monkey King just a moment. Drops the arena, doesn't catch him out. Now that's another big spell gone for Motivate. They will finally find that bot tier one. But it takes a lot of commitment. That's arena. That was like two sets of rotations on bot that didn't pan out. There's finally some room for Jack to farm safely in. But there are still some forward wards to watch movement in bot jungle anyway. So for the side of Boom, they can still play aggressive there. They've got control of the top jungle. They've bought a ton of space out from Mushi just up there in net worth. And you're dealing with two really farm cores. A Luna that's farmed up and the Snapfire hitting the same timings. Travels, Blink up, Yult's next for Yopage. Once that's up, he's going to be lining up for the cookies. It's too much pressure as well. Look at Tim's mid lane. Just throws the Enchanted Creep into the T1 tower. He'll force Fearless back. Even Maceros and Boom Booey show up. And again, Tim's, he plays his hero very well. He just forces rotations when they don't want to be rotating. He might die once in a while, but who the hell cares? You're buying more space for your snap buy, you're buying more space for Mushi on the Luna. And speaking of this snap buy, John Yopage, for the second game in a row, has maintained the top net worth lead on the board, and he, he's just really uncontested apart from his own pos one. It's a real big feed on the snap buy, it's not that easy. Yeah, it's just playing around with that early magical burst he has, just looking for the rotations, leveraging this travel, his presence out from that. Motivate Trust will try to go for another smoke play. They might find a bit of a bigger kill in FBZ, but if they're unfortunate, the smoke might break in the, in the in the wrong spot and they turn the wrong way. They don't manage to get the read on a monkey. Uh, maybe they jump someone on mid. Yopaj is behind the tier one. They're gonna have to commit hard for that kill though. It feels very desperate. It does feel very desperate. Like the way they position themselves right here, motivate. They should know that nobody will be farming here, even with that tier one mid tower standing. Of course, they do get a nice Observer Ward, though, and I think that's really what they came for, is get the Deep Observer Ward going, set up for the mid-tier one later on. They understand how important it's going to be to not allow Boom to just take over this map. Is Maceros so close yet so far? He jumps out of the tree. He has still been stunned up. They'll drop the Freezing Field, but that's cancelled. A nice arrow, though. They might still be able to go as the spear back is there. Hookshot scam. He's going to try and trade, and he will be able to get it. Yopage does take the kill. In the end, I think Motivate will be happy if they can find a bit more. Tim's will be stunned up. Cookie is there. The hill's still keeping him alive as he oh is going to walk out. He is just fine. And in the end, it's going to be a one for one on the off lane. So not really great for either side. Yeah, and you have to admire how tanky Tim's is. He's got the solar press. He doesn't even have Untouchable up yet, Mike. Just the max level heal is enough to sustain him through with a pretty good charge and magic wand. And Motivate, they have to commit so much for these rotations. Whereas, Radiant's look at Mushi. He's just oh, playing in top right. jungle, uncontested, keeping up that farm lead. He's going to have an item advantage compared to Jackie's Luna in game one. He's going to hit his Manta into the Scotty or Satanic and just get going from there. Yeah, meanwhile, your pass just yoinks away an arcane rune from Fearless, who was just so close yet so far. So your pass just blinks into the last second and grabs it, no problem. So now you've got an arcane rune to worry about on the snap fire once that Mortimus Kiss is back up and available. Man, Boom are really punishing Motivate as well. Like, knowing the T1 mid hasn't dropped yet, they are not allowing the Radiant jungle to be taken by Motivate. Radiant's Mind you, Motivate trust they are still hanging around the top jungle, so that's fine. But Boom, it seems to be all part of the game plan. Uh, Mushi still top of the net worth board. Got Yopage right behind him. Jackie, while he has been freely farming on the Wraith King as of late, is still unable to close the gap. No. Back bot lane. Wait, behind who? They see that Crystal Maiden, John. 
Everyone Radiant rushes towards it. It's just free money. <laughs> uh, as a CM player, you know, the state of CM is just so sad. Like, it, it does come true when you're playing against Enchantress, playing against Beastmaster sometimes, but it's still a tough game for any CM player. You move so slow, it's hard for you to get a good ult off. It looks like they will clump up mid, though. Yeah, Master Ross, that's a nice pick off. He's got the snap by, but do they have the damage? Your Parsh is just walking out of there, and now the hook shot. Scam, they might be able to turn this. Your Parsh has survived. Remnant forward feels he's still trying, but the Boundless Strike is out. Oh, your Parsh, he survives through it all. Now the Mortimus Kisses are going to be thrown right on top of Master Ross. That'll be another. Oh, Motivate, they just can't get anything. They are getting denied every single time they try to make a jump in, and now their mid tier one tower is gone. Oh man, it's, it's Tim's and his healing as well. He comes in, just max level nature's attendance. There's not even a holy locket in this guy yet. It's enough to keep Yopaj in game. The damage just isn't coming true from Fearless. He does have the Maelstrom up. But he's not protected from the magical spell. Scam just hookshot and cuts off that entire rotation. And now the Roche is open for Boom. No contestion coming through from Motivate. They do not have Arena. They don't really have a good way of playing in that pit. So that's another resource for Boom to use as Mushi will now have a second life to protect himself from the conditions. Boom Bowie, he'll be gone. Trying to get some D wards out while the Roshan was happening. So Boom will make the easy jump in. And at the very least, you do have a Deso now on Jackie. He might be able to help out. It's still doubtful, but I think at this rate, you have to try with this power spike. And they might just now, as Fearless, he does get a nice chains off. But the arrow, gonna be off the mark as Tim's. Does get cookied forward by Yopage, and now the hook yeah. shot scam. He's back in. Nice Cogs pushback. Q, he does have leaf charges, but the balance strike's gonna land Maceros. He'll try to jump in and turn with the spear. It will not connect. Scam, he's about to drop, but they found the Marana. No problem. As the Mortimus Kiss is still coming in onto the Crystal Maiden. Yopage, he doesn't have Blink up right now. So he can't secure the kill onto that CM, but Mushi can. And so can FBZ as now feel as he is out of mana again. The Desolator on FBZ just making it hellish for the Ember already as now they found Jackie boys. And they should be able to at least get the first life as they'll dive into the T2 Towers. Why the hell not? Force the buybacks out from Motivate. They're gonna try and fight back Jackie. He's dropping low already. He'll try to run backwards. Tim's will go down, but Jackie's gone. FBZ, he's still alive. Finally goes down. Maybe they can clean up. Yopage, he will drop in Mushi. He's very low himself now. He still has the Aegis. But this is a pretty big swing to go back the way of Motivate if they can win the team fight. But now the next turn around. Back on a Mass Ross. They'll get it. Not a tie back, but they'll get the killers. They even found Q. On that Marana. Who won the fight, John? In fact, never mind, it's not over yet. Fearless, be very careful, sir. He would have no remnants right now. He'll get scammed down, but there goes Boom Bowie. Tim's, though, is trapped up. Masteros, he does fight back as they jump back in onto Mushi. Now they want that Luna dead, but the cookie gonna give him a bit of an escape route. Or will it? Mushi, he's still trying to run. Tim's right behind him with the enchant. Will slow down Masteros. The chase continues, though. He has Blink in two seconds. Can he land the spear? Oh, he goes for the arena. The spear wouldn't have been enough damage anyway. Masteros, he's still trying. But Tim's, he's going to turn again. Just the amount of turns this game. It's been absolutely insane as Masteros is going to drop and that'll be a tieback this time around. As Boom, they'll go for an immediate smoke up. There is no stopping this team fight. Boom and Otan as they're going to find a Crystal Maiden, but more importantly, they find Jackie, and that's a target you want. You've got Yules up on your page, you've got the Mortimus Kisses, and Jack, boys, he has got no reincarnate. Right back to the oh. graveyard for the Wraith King, and it's just complete domination from Boom Esports, a scam. He just keeps rubbing salt into the wound of Jackie. Will not leave the poor man alone. It's a rough time for Motivate for us. They have to... They keep committing all their resources to try to find these kills and Boom just commit back. And they just win out. Like, they've got the damage, they've got the control. They're dancing around the side of Motivate. Yopaj again, trying to play tag with Q here. You say trying, Johnny. He's doing a pretty good job of it, Q. One more leap charge left, but Yopaj, he's running very quick with the boots to travel, but loses vision. Now the Creep Wave is actually dealing a lot of damage to poor Snapfire. But he's going to be okay. As meanwhile, oh. towards the east side, they've got Skem there. Fearless, he is forced to run out. 
In the meantime, Q is uh, still trying to run away from you, Paj. And bot lane is just being forced in. T2 tower almost dropping. Rotations are going to be coming out as the spear is there from Maseros. This will be a nice big pick off on the Luna. Jackie joins in as well. Mushi, he'll pop the Eclipse and try to fight back. Maseros, they're healing up. The Luna still alive with Mushi. Finally ends up going down, but here comes the snap by Yopage. He may have been a bit too late to the party though, as they will surround him now. Cookie out. FBZ trying to help with the balance, and the oh. pause comes out. Do not say Discord, Skem. I don't want to hear Discord this time around. <laughs> Oh, motivate in the oh, middle of it looks it. like they're oh. He says it. <laughs> oh, someone's got to fix up their Discord there, you know? Something's yeah. up. And the team has Discord still. I think it's more of a headset getting thrown out the window there. John from doing <laughs> esports. Mushi right now, not very happy. He's long respawn timer. He might just go and carefully watch his team, see what they're up to, and why he died, I reckon. Is, well, it looks like the, the slapping is over. Mushi, he'll take a seat. Your punch, still caught out, is going to drop. And again, these kind of kills, John, they do start to add up for motivate. I could do this all day. Now, those are massive. That gives Jackie a ton of gold. He does get to catch up on that great king now. Ooh. Yeah, FBZ, he got caught by the spear trying to TP up. Maseros, he didn't have the backup to really get take care of FBZ. Well, Skem, he did end up whiffing the hook shot there as well. So, in the end, nobody dies in that engagement, but... I think Boom, as, as confident as they are and as ahead as they are, they do still have to be a little bit wary of the comeback potential here for Motivate. Yeah, they're hitting your spikes. You've got the blink coming out here, I believe, for Jackie, so you can jump up into the fight, distract them, keep tank up most of the damage first, and then have the team follow through. That's where Boom, that's where Motivate can shine. If they go for the smoke play, they know that the defense is going to come out for this mid. Yeah, scam. It's being caught out on the clockwork. That'd be a nice way to get this fight started. The scam's gone. FBZ, all he can do is watch right now as he doesn't have the backup. And Maseros, he finds another. Tims, this one will be in slow motion. They drop the Wukong's command, the buyback is there. Skem, he'll rejoin his Tims is still not dead. In fact, he's going to survive, and now the hook shot connects on two heroes. They found Jackie, they found Felix, and now they'll find Boom Booey. Skem on the clock, he's doing it again, John. Just keeps finding great targets. Boom Esports, they, they just keep winning. That was really unfortunate for Jackie. He thought he was safe. He used the stun. Once the hits were coming out from FBZ, he just ran out of mana. That defusal on our monkey, holding back the Raid King. No shard up for Jackie. He's just not protected from the mana drain. And you just lose out on your Raid King's presence when he can't revive. Like, I, I think that shard will have to come true for Jackie in this game. He is going to go for the BKB first, but they're losing a lot of ground. Mid tier 2 gone. High ground opens up. Mushi has the damage to just keep this push going. It's a Luna. It, it just melts these objectives absurdly fast. Motivate Trust, respawns aren't too long. They've got the arena for Masteros when he does want to TP for the defense. But they're going to have to do something to prevent themselves from losing too much objective. It, it's just gone. I think the one bright side for Motivate Trust is their side lanes aren't open yet. Tier 2 stand to protect. So they're not going to lose any more lanes. But they are in a very bad position now. One lane constantly shoved in. That means someone's always got to respond to mid. And that opens up more potential for Boom to just be on aggressive. Motivate, they've got to try something. I mean, the BKB's been worked on now by Jackie, but... You look at Mushi on that Luna, John, he's well and truly ahead. It's almost like Mushi just never retired from being a pro player. He's just, he's just back on top. <laughs> Nothing ever happened. He's still got it. That's what I was going to bring up as well. I mean, at least in this series, John, he's looked fantastic. Oh yeah, he, he's had a lot of space, he knows where to position himself in these engagements, he knows when to come in, and boom, they're smoked up. They know if they find a win here, they could go for another set of racks or end the game. Look shot, Skem, he's off the mark, but FBZ, he's got the balance to catch out Maseros into the Enchant, and now the Wukongs to make sure he has no way out. Nice pick off again here from Boom. They can now maybe just go back for another T2 tower. Or maybe just Roshan once it's up, but we still got to wait about 37 seconds before we know when that's coming up. Instead, I think they will just go top tier too. Nothing really else to play for here for Boom. Or maybe not. Maybe just go for another fight as Mushi, he's gone in. Arrow, going to be dodged. Nice Manta there from Mushi. ZFBZ. Going to find anyone else. Again, top tier 2 tower is open. 
and Scamp, like a true support, John, getting the team prepared for what really matters. Yeah, just guiding his team's attention towards top to take that tower. Motivate Trust in a position to trade tier twos. You have the bot wave shoved in, Jackie kind of farming the jungle. He does leave the area, so I don't think they're going to have enough damage to really look for the one for one trade. And they get a good scan, they know Jackie's there. Absolutely, Jackie, he can't afford to keep dying like this. He does have reincarnate, but he has no teammates around him. Absolutely none. He will go down a second time surely as he tries to blink away, but they've got him with the boundless strike. And Scam has been absolutely ruthless in this upper bracket final. No regard for human life here from Scam as Roshan's up to boot. Nobody from Boom gonna check it out yet, but it is available. Yeah. Could be a really nice time for that Roshan. They might just look for easy kills off Fulis. Got a blast into the coming game. This upsets me, John. You know why? Because tomorrow I'm going to queue up a pub, and my mid lane is going to choose Snapfire, and they're going to call themselves <laughs> Japoy or Yopage or something, or Idol, and I'm screwed. My, my MMR's gone now. <laughs> it's the life. You know, when Yopage brings them out, people will want to try because it looks fun. It looks easy when Yopage plays it. Yeah. Kid, it's not. It's not easy. He's a professional. He's been paid the big bucks to play this way. As Boom starts ripping into those racks. No Roche needed here, Mike. Another set, another lane gonna be shoved in, and they could just go for the tier force. They don't need Mega Creeps, they don't need that tier 2 gone. They know the defense of Motivate Trust is just shaking. So dominant from Boom Esports, as they are right onto the tier 4 towers and Motivate. They've gotta find a way to defend, but my god, it just looks so impossible. Jackie, he's waiting. He'll just dance in the background. Oh, that's a great speed dodge again from Mushi. In FBZ, he had the BKB in time, and look at this. They're literally just ignoring them. Arena down. What's that gonna do? Absolutely nothing. They do land an arrow and a spear onto FBZ, but Tims will just heal them up as they are literally just ignoring heroes right now. FBZ is getting low, but not low enough yet as the Mortimus Kisses do come in. They finally found the Monkey King, but he'll come in a buyback. Masteros, he's gone right off the bat, and now you've lost Jackie. No buyback on either core as they will just dive for more. Why the hell not? The GG's been called. Motivate Trust just completely outplayed here from Boom Esports. I'll tell you what, John, if there's one team that deserves the Grand Finals, it's going to be Boom. I mean, they just look so clean. It, it wasn't even a... I don't know what to... I don't know how to phrase it, John. It wasn't difficult. It wasn't a challenge for them. Just another yeah, day. It, it, really clean sweep coming out from Boom. They pull out the Snapfire for Yopage again. I was just so curious that Motivate Trust didn't expect it. Like, they see Snapfire clock in exactly the same draft as Game 1 in that opening. They did the Lady Ember pick in the second phase, but Snapfire was still there. They still had to consider that possibility. And, you know, Fearless did adjust. He did go for a slight of fist build going 1-3-1-1 one, one, one by 6. So he did, he did have a little bit more of a lane to play with, but it wasn't enough to compensate. And boom, they just had this overwhelming start once more. Sure, it looked like they might have been counterpicked with the Enchantress playing into Marana and CM. And the early laning phase of Motivate Trust, they were finding some kills. Not enough to give them a big lead. So, Boom, it feels like you're sending a message, Mike. You know, I was having a chat with Gary, Boom mm. CEO. Yeah. And he was he was asking me, you know, if I know anyone handling the CDPC, if we know anyone, because they want to be upper div. They feel like they don't deserve lower div. And you have to remember, Motivate Trust are in the upper division as well. They are. So this, this to me looks like a message being sent by Boom. They're motivated. They know that they're in the lower div. They're trying to show we don't deserve to be there. And they're just rocking the boat around. Motivate Trust, upper div team. They qualified from the lower div. Didn't even look close in this series. But how bad must you feel as a lower division team as well, right? You're going into the next season. You're in the DPC. You're feeling happy. Your team's all hyped up. They're going to, they're you know, make their way to the upper division in season two, perhaps. But then you've got Boom Esports sitting there just waiting for you. Last time around, it was Motivate Trust and SMG. And now Boom, which I would probably say is stronger than both those teams were in the uh, lower division back earlier on in the, in the, in the last DPC. So, I'm, man, it's, it's got to be depressing because it looks like we do have an interview with yep. Mushi. Let's bring him oh, in. Yes. Hello, Mushi. Congratulations on your victory, sir. How are you feeling right now? Oh, um, thanks. I'm feeling great. Fantastic. I mean, you, you look like you never retired, Mushi. I mean, that, that game one and two, you look fantastic. <laughs> Talk to me about it. How does it feel playing on the uh, on the pro scene again? Uh, it's uh, just feel good to play, but I, I didn't feel any difference for me because I, even though I 
retired uh, from a pro player, I still play a lot of pub games. Mm. Yep. Yep. So, so just never left. You're always, yeah, never always left. the same guy. Well, tell me yeah. about the coaching as well. I mean, you're, you're stepping in, you're playing for Boom Esports right now. I, I suppose you're leading the team. How does it feel being a coach and a player at the same time? Is it, is it difficult? Do you find it easy? Yeah, I told the players, uh, if I play, I cannot do um, do play very well at the at the coach. So I, uh, no matter what, I think the coach is still very important for the teams. Is because of the the third perspective, and also uh, as a coach, I'm not only um make them be a better players, I also make them be a better person even outside the game. Excellent. You you love to yep. hear it, John. X, John, go on. Yeah, Mushi, I'm curious. You know. Initially, we saw you playing Pause 5. Recently in playoffs, you switched to Pause 1. Where did that decision come from? What pushed you to go into the safe lane nowadays? Uh, because that uh, previously, we are looking for the Pause 5 um, mm -hmm. role. And then uh, we, we found uh, Abing from to play for us recently. And then end up Abing is not playing for us anymore. And Scam decided to move to Pause 5. For for further for for further game as well, so she just want to get used on the post five, and I just moved to the post one. Okay, post so yep. does that imply that going forward, like con considering this is temporary for you, right? Or um, does that mean Boom is now looking for a pause one instead of a pause five going forward? Uh, we, yeah, we already have a players that are waiting okay. us to finish the BTS, and then he will join the team, and I will move back to the coach. All right, looking forward to that. Now, you yep. guys are set to, of course, play in Grand Finals. There are like three other teams that you might face up against. Of course, Motivate Trust, which you just played, OB Esports, X Neon, and Polaris. How are you guys feeling against them? Which team do you want to face up there in the finals, Mushi? Um, I do respect all all of the all of them. Actually, I don't. I uh, no matter who is facing, we analyze them and we draft against them and we play against them. So, is is this the same for me? All right. Okay. Thank yep. you. Yeah, I'll just ask you one final question. I know you're being modest, Mushi. I know you're trying to be a nice guy, but are you winning the grand finals? I mean, it was very dominant in that last series. Are we seeing Boom Esports being crowned the BTS Pro Series champions? Uh, no, uh, there's no such thing <laughs> for me. Yeah. All right, fair enough. Thank you very much, Mushi. I hope you have a fantastic night, and we look forward to seeing you again tomorrow. All right, have a good day. Same to you. Thank you. Thank you. Yep, thank you. Everyone's just been so nice to us recently, John. Everyone's wishing us a good day. Everyone's happy to talk to us. I, I, you love to see it. Remember uh, last year, everyone was just too shy to do interviews, and now everyone's just so talkative. You love to see it. Fantastic. Yeah. Yeah, it's great to hear, and it's great to hear that Mushi is very comfy back as a player. The confidence is showing. He said it. Mm. He still plays a lot of pubs. He's still in form. I saw people talking about his age. He's around 31 now, Mike. He's still got it. You know, there's... age is not an excuse for you, Mike. No, there's, there's no excuse, Jonathan. I mean, I've, I've turned 30. I know I'm getting a little bit older, but, you know, I, I can still mess around with the young guns, John. I can still play with the young <laughs> boys out there. There's no, no problem with that. I, I think I do a pretty good job in the, in the pub scene. Still, I mean, Mushi, I'm proving that age is just mm. not a factor. I mean, just, again, fantastic play. Just no issues here from Mushi. Still, we are going to go into our second series of the night, and that is going to be the lower bracket round of three. Of course, one of the teams does have to go home. The next team, of course, will go on to the lower bracket final where they will be up against Motivate Trust, and that's all happening tomorrow. But for tonight, we have OB Neon against Polaris. One more slot left for that lower bracket final. Looking very forward to seeing how this one pans out. And John, I'm just going to get it. It's 15 minutes. The, the break time is going to be 15 minutes. So we'll go to a 15-minute break. And right after the break, we'll be back with OB Neon against Polaris. We'll see you then.